Welcome back everyone. I hope you're doing well. Today we'll be reacting to the map that saved the most lives. Of course, this is Map Men and J Foreman. That's the channel. Um, great channel, by the way. I've said that every time I've done a video. Uh, if you're new here, this is what we do. We learn. So we're about to learn which map saved the most lives. I don't know if this is humanitarian or if this is like something to do with um due to the thumbnail. I was thinking it had to do something with like maybe a plague or something like that, but let's jump right into it and see what they got. During the coronavirus lockdown. And it's not not an uncoincidence. This episode was written during the coronavirus lockdown. And it's not not an uncoincidence that it's about a map that stopped a deadly disease. Welcome to Map Men. We're the men. And here's the map. Map Men, Map Men, Map, Map, Map Men. 200 years ago, cholera was one of the most feared illnesses or indeed any things in the world. Nobody knew how it spread or where it came from, but they did know that if you got it, there was a 50% chance you would die. Some I th isn't cholera morally due to like the earth and the water? Sometimes within just one day. And a pretty unpleasant final day it would be too. Within hours, cholera can cause teeth to protrude, eyes to sink and blood to thicken and turn blue, giving cholera its nickname, the Blue Terror. Well, I'm terrified. Mm. This is because cholera causes the body to lose as much water as possible in the shortest possible wow. time. As much as 20 litres in a day. Wow. Because it spread so quickly between people, scientists spent literally hours thinking about ways to fix cholera. To a man, they were all convinced it was passed around through bad air, which they called miasma to try and sound clever. It wasn't until someone called Jon Snow, not that Jon Snow, not that Jon Snow, this Jon Snow, did some thinking of his own that progress was finally made. The story starts in Old York in the olden days. Old York. John grew up in a poor part of the city where sewage flowed openly in the street and filth was a fact of life. Oh look, an apple. Snow was so grossed out by it, he became unusually health conscious and styled himself on a 21st century hipster. He didn't drink alcohol, was a vegetarian and insisted on only drinking distilled water. That's pretty progressive. Snow escaped his life of squalor by being very good at maths and was offered a place at Newcastle to train as a physician. He first witnessed the grim effects of cholera while treating patients in the nearby coal mining town of Killingworth. That's a town name? That's not a good town name to be, that's not a good town to live in. He noticed that men who worked down the pit were dying of cholera at exactly the same rate as everyone else, even though they were nowhere near the foul air of the town. He began to suspect cholera had nothing to do with bad air, instead suspecting it might instead have something to do with the water, instead. Ooh. But because Victorian scientists really enjoyed using the word miasma, they all ignored his radical theory. Snow would need hard proof to convince the doubters, and finally got the chance years later when he moved down to London. In 1854, cholera struck Soho in the heart of London, and John Snow had just moved into a house in the heart of Soho, on Sackville Street, right by the Itsu. He was in the perfect place at the perfect time. Yes! I mean, how awful. <laughs> Snow went from door to door recording as much as he could about the cases that had occurred so far. Cholera? Good. Excitingly, he then plotted his data onto a map. When Snow looked at the data he'd collected, he made an astonishing discovery. Almost all the recorded cases occurred near the Broad Street water pump. The further from the pump he went, the fewer deaths he recorded. A clear pattern had emerged. Wow. What John Snow was doing was one of the earliest known examples of data journalism, which doesn't sound sexy and isn't sexy, but I still like it. Still, in order to finally prove to all the miasmarists out there... What a, like, we just got stuff there. What, a, what an innovative way of doing things in a time where technology is non-existent that it really was the pump, Snow needed a watertight case. That's a good pun. I know. But there appeared to be some anomalies, such as an isolated case miles away to the north in Hampstead. Mm. How did the cholera get all the way up there? Mm. He went to speak to the elderly victim, and it turned out her niece had been bringing her the water from Broad Street, because, like many others, she thought the Broad Street water tasted sweeter. And we'll try not to think about the fact that sweeter, in this case, was another way of saying contained sewage. <laughs> As well as cases far away from the pump, there was another type of anomaly that needed explaining. Non-cases really close to the pump, such as the workhouse on nearby Poland Street, which had bizarrely recorded hardly any deaths at all. So Snow went to visit the workhouse and found they had their very own water well for water. Water surprise! Here we go! There were also no deaths at the local ale distillery. When Snow tried to... Drinking ale. ...to interview people who worked there, nothing they said made any sense. Which made sense, because it turned out that instead of getting cholera, they'd been getting drunk. No water, no cholera. Say a minute ago? Was I down? Every apparent setback to Snow's water theory only ended up making his case even waterier and tighterier than ever before. So he took his map to the local health commission, who were convinced enough to remove the handle from the Broad Street pump. 
Nice. And a good job they did, because the cases immediately started drying up. The other two were better. Yeah, I know. But how did that pump get infected in the first place? He found the answer with the help of a holy gossip monger. Henry Whitehead, the local priest, knew everybody's business, including who had diarrhoea when. With a combination of Whitehead's nosiness and Snow's clever map making, they were able to trace the outbreak back to case zero, a baby living at number 40, whose mother had been washing nappies into the house's underground cesspit. Not, not unsurprisingly, they found cracks between the cesspit and the well, finally confirming that everyone had been drinking number 40's number 2's. We have to take our hats off to this gruesome twosome for collecting so much data over what must have been months of work. Yeah. Actually, the whole endeavour from start to finish took just three days. Wow! That's impressive. Wow! Shockingly, despite all the evidence they gathered, and with the outbreak cleared up as a result of their work, the mainstream miasmarists continue to ignore Jon Snow's findings, and the local council soon- Ego, and that's not, like, to this time, like, to today? Till today, there are so many different fields, whether it be astrology, geography, uh, anthropology, that if something is new, doesn't mean it's right. And that's just the, the mainstream thoughts. And pop the handle back on the Broad Street pump as if nothing was ever wrong with it. As always seems to happen when someone does something amazing, Jon Snow died before his work was accepted. Luckily today, medical experts are always taken seriously, and their advice is always listened to by people in charge who are never interested in personal political gain over rigorous, evidence-led, peer-reviewed scientific facts. Except sometimes it isn't, which is why every year to this day, the medical community holds the Pump Handle Lecture, during which a mock handle is ceremonially removed and replaced in recognition of the struggle of getting people in charge to listen to doctors. Perhaps the most fun way Jon Snow is remembered today is in the form of this pub, the Jon Snow... Also, you gotta remember, not wearing a tinfoil hat, Always see, always figure out where the sources of the doctor's material is, so you're informed yourself. Just don't rely on the experts. Be an expert yourself. Jon Snow, pub. We're not sure how the famously teetotal Jon Snow would have felt about this, but either way, cheers to Jon Snow. It. Cheers. Hmm, tastes quite sweet. Oh no. Well, that's it without the advert, so if you don't want to watch the advert, peace out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and let's watch the advert. Hello, I'm Edward. And I'm William. And you join us at the start of a motortastic road trip. Over the next 52 days, we're going to be visiting every single motorway service station in Britain. And on the way, we'll get to see lots of other really cool things like castles and cathedrals. No, there's no time for that. We're only visiting motorway service stations. We're going to visit Toddington and Newport Pagnall and Watford Gap and Charnock Ridge. Oh, this 2,713 mile journey is going to be really boring. Mile and Leicester North. I know. Y'all say mile in the UK? I thought you would say kilometers. I'll keep myself entertained by listening to a wide selection of audiobooks using Audible. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks. Audiobooks are like books for your ears, usually read by the author, sometimes read by other handsome narrators. You can find everything on Audible, from bestsellers and new releases, to languages, business, motivation and celebrity memoirs, such as Pat Sharp's hilarious semi-fictional autobiography. And it's not just audiobooks you find on Audible, there's all sorts of spoken word entertainment, like podcasts, guided wellness programs and TV and radio shows. You can keep credits for up to a year and then binge on a whole series. You can download and listen offline anytime across devices without losing your spot. Oh, it's so good! If you want to try Audible for yourself, just go to audible.com slash mapmen to get a free 30-day trial. And for Americans, there's also a special holiday offer on Audible Plus membership, starting from just $4.95 a month for the first six months, and then just $7.95 after that. If you're in the US, text mapmen to 500-500. Or if you're in any other country, go to audible.com slash mapmen for a free 30-day trial of Audible. There's like nothing stopping you. Oh, I'm really looking forward to this trip now that i know it's going to be accompanied by the soundtrack of hours and hours of sin by the way if you're an advertiser you love these guys you just absolutely love these guys because they put in so much effort time and energy towards the advert versus most people would just be like here's here's here's, here's what we got Insulating entertainment from audible and thorough right let's motor away Map men, map men, map, map, map men, men. I didn't know there was an outro version of the song, too. Interesting. Well, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, uh, this is what we do. We, we, we're, we're, we're keen on learning. Um, so, yeah. Didn't, so, Jon Snow, I thought this was going to be like some sort of like listography or, or not listography, listicle or something about 
different maps, but it was actually deep and talking about Jon Snow and the cholera outbreaks and how they use data visualization with him, you know, triangulating with the, the priests in terms of um, actual data of who had it and why they had it. Medical science and just data science as a whole, just phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Bye-bye.